Morning guys, Dave Canterbury at the Pathfinder School. What I wanted to do today was I want to talk to you guys a little bit about a quick way to make a bow saw and not have to carry the frame. I've had a lot of guys ask me about that and I've done a little bit of research on it. I've looked around a little bit. I pretty much knew how to go about doing it without the frame, but I've always carried a frame. It's just easier to me to carry the frame, but it's also lighter and more compact just to carry the blade. So you have to kind of weigh that out. Now, if you're carrying a bedroll and haversack situation like I am here, you could put that bow saw frame and bow saw inside your haversack if you want, or inside your bedroll if you wanted to, but it's going to make it a little more bulky. So what I've done in this case is I've just taken the pocket of my bedroll and I have slid my bow saw blade, brand new in the package, inside my bedroll. And it's about a little bit shorter than my bedroll length is. I like to keep my bedroll length about the length of my axe handle. So if I want to go lightweight and I don't want to carry an axe, but I want the ability to use a bigger saw for bucking wood and things like that if I want to cut up larger pieces of wood to process for my fire, my SAK is not going to get it for very big pieces of wood. Now I use my SAK to cut the material to make the handle or the frame for my bow saw. Then I'll just put it together and I can use this bigger saw blade and bigger bow saw to process larger pieces of wood. And it just slides, like I said, right down inside my bedroll here in that open pocket area. Doesn't take up any room. Doesn't hardly weigh anything. And it's just nice and secure right there. I don't have that added weight of an axe or that added weight of the frame or that added bulk of the frame. Then the only other thing that I really need, and the best method that I've seen to do this, is just to use a couple of key rings. And key rings are a very versatile item to carry in that, number one, they don't take up a lot of room. And they don't weigh a whole lot. I've got a couple like inch and a quarter, maybe inch and a half split, split key rings here. And they're just tied to the same paracord that my SAK is tied to that's big enough to fit around my wrist so that when I'm working with this tool, I don't lose it. I can drop it and I don't have to worry about losing it or putting it in my pocket every time. And I'm not going to lose it. That's why I keep that lanyard on there about the size of my wrist. And then I've tied those key rings to that lanyard so I don't lose them. Now, Again, you know, I say, if you're going to carry stuff, you got to have that survival mentality or that self-reliance mentality of, if I'm going to add something to my kit, what's it going to do for me? Can I do more than one thing with this? Well, with these key rings, you actually you can. Um, for sure, they are going to work good for the saw, and I'll show you that in just a few minutes. They also could be used in that same frame, used the same way with just bank line stretch between them to make a bow, to make a bow saw for a bow drill fire if you needed it that way. You can also make a very easy, if you're making net purses, or if you're making some type of a net trap, a purse net, like this one, and I've showed this in other videos, I actually did a demonstration catching a pheasant uh, in this net on a video, just so you guys can see the effectiveness of them, but basically it's just a net that's tied between two key rings, it was built on the key rings basically, and then it opens up and it has a guideline that goes between the top meshes, which basically becomes kind of like the top rope and a bottom rope. And then when this thing gets pulled, it basically drops that net into a configuration where it becomes like a purse or a trap. So if you're going to make something like that on the fly, you would have those key rings to do that if you needed to. You can also use those key rings to make some type of a minnow type trap, which we've also showed in other videos, as your opening if you were going to make a net trap for minnows and things like that. So those key rings can come in pretty handy. They could definitely be multifunctional. I'm sure I could think of probably a few other things to do with them if I really sat down hard and thought about it. So let's go over here and harvest a piece of wood that we're going to use for our bow. We'll get it bent and shaped. Then I will show you one improvement that I've made to it that I think will make it more last longer or give it more longevity, make it a little bit more of a hardy tool than what I've seen on the internet. But i got to give credit where credit's due. There's a couple of guys on the internet that make a pretty good little bow saw just with a piece of wood and a blade and a couple key rings. But I think there's one improvement that might be missing to that I'm going to show you in this video. So stay with me, guys.
So I'm not carrying a Baco Laplander right now, but I do have this Hunter SAK in my pocket, so I can use this small saw to make something that's going to give me a bigger saw. Now this thing's going to have to be pretty flexible, so i got to make sure, that's why I cut a nice green one, I'm going to have to break it down a little bit and flex it and turn it into a bow and break the fibers a little bit and I'll have to work out a little while to do that. I can't just go bending the stick to make it work. I've got to break it down a little bit first. So we'll work with this for a little bit. Get our length right, cut it off. And I'll show you how to set that up into a saw. Okay, so We've got our branch here. We're going to start working this thing to get it to bend. And we're really just going to have to, just like we were doing in the woods, we're going to have to start breaking it down a little bit at a time. Because remember, our saw blade has to go in between this to create the frame. Now, let's talk about the height. And we'll call it, for lack of better words, we'll call it the brace height, which means the distance between the top of the bow or the middle of the bow frame and the blade. It's just like a bow and arrow. Brace height is the distance between the string and the belly of the bow. It's no different with this. We've got to factor how long the stick's going to be by how deep we want that brace height to be. And remember that brace height dictates how big a round the sticks are that you can process. And that's the advantage of a bow saw over a bucking type saw is that most buck saws aren't very deep as far as how big a round you can cut a log without having to roll the log or roll the piece of wood. So if we want our brace height to be 8 inches, in other words that's the biggest log we're going to cut with this saw at 8 inches, then we really need to have our bow at least 8 inches longer than our blade or right at 8 inches longer than our blade. And I think this one's probably more like 10 or close to it. If I was measuring with my foot, I'd say it was probably pretty close to 10 inches, maybe 11 inches longer. So this might still be slightly long, and that's okay. That just means we can cut a bigger tree. And again, the longer this is, the less stress we're going to put on it by bending it. The shorter it is, the more stress we're going to put on it bending it. But we've got to get this thing to bend at least far enough up that we can get our blade in between here. So we're going to work on that for a little while. Again, this is a good green hardwood stick, and i got it bending really good here outside these two areas where there's a branch growing off here and a branch growing off here. There's one here as well, but this area right here is bending really good. And this is going to give me an ideal bow saw blade, I believe, in the end, or bow saw frame in the end when I get done. And this is just a matter of taking your time and breaking those fibers down so that you don't snap that thing when you try to string the bow. And we'll talk about that in a minute. Okay, now we talked about this thing a minute ago being longer than I really wanted. I want about 8 inches of brace height. So I really only need about 8 inches beyond this blade, which is about that much. So if I split that distance in half, I need to cut about 2.5 inches off each end of this bow with my SAK again. And then I should be getting pretty close to what I want. And it's okay to have a little longer when you're bending it out anyway, because it'll help you to break those fibers without putting so much stress on the wood. So we'll cut about two and a half inches off of both sides of this thing and we'll see where we're at. Now we should have cut about five inches off of that thing total, which should give us more in line of what we're looking for, which is about eight inches longer than a blade. And that's pretty close, I'd say, right there. So now what we're gonna do is we're going to take these two rings off and we're gonna put them on the saw blade. And all we're going to do with that is just take them right off of this lanyard that we've got tied on our SAK. Good place to store them. We're not going to lose them that way. They're in our pocket. Tie our lanyard back up. Shove that back in our pocket. And we're just going to thread these rings on just like we would a key ring. And this blade's got two holes in it. We're going to use this last hole. Just like this. And we're going to thread that right on there. Just like that. And we're going to do the same thing on the other end. So when we're done, we've got our blade with two key rings in it. Now we need to 
get our bow ready. And again, let me just take it, stretch it a couple more times real quick. Make sure it's bending okay before we mess with it too much more. We got a pretty good bend in that right now. So what we're going to do now is we're going to try to, we're going to split both ends of this right here and then we're going to lash it to keep it from splitting out and I think that is the biggest thing I've seen people do in other videos and on other places on the internet where they've shown pictures of these type saws made like this they don't lash that split and if you don't lash that split eventually it's going to split out on you so if you're planning on using this more than for about 10 minutes you're going to want to lash that thing with some kind of a nail knot and I'll show you how to do that in just a minute Okay, so I've got a baton here, and I'm going to push on this thing a little bit to make sure that I'm putting my splits right where I want them because I want them to be perpendicular to my bend. And then I'm going to take and just put my knife on top of that, dead center as I can get it, and baton it in there a little bit. And I'm going to go a little bit deeper than I think I need to go because I'm going to lash it anyway. And then I want this next one, and this is important, that these are really in a good perpendicular line so you're not getting any twist in the blade when you put this thing together. Like I said, I'm going a little deeper than I think I need to go on purpose. Okay. So now the premise of this will be that our blade will sit inside this split. Well, I have my glasses on so I can't see this very well. Let me take this, go ahead and take this cover off now that we're good and safe. I'll pull this blade out of the cover real quick. Set the cover off to the side. It's getting old. And then we'll put this back in the blade here real quick. This is really quick and dirty, this stuff. It doesn't take nothing to do this. Okay. So we got that ready. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to put this right, like I said, right where the split's at is where this is going to go in, just like that. And that ring is what's going to hold it in there, just like this. And then we're going to come over and bend our saw and string the bow. But before we do that, we really want to lash this thing. So what we're going to look at is about where we want that to sit, and we're going to lash down, you know, 8, 10 wraps right there real good with a nail knot so that there's no way that thing's going to split out on us after the fact. Okay, guys, so now we're going to put a nail knot on both ends of this bow. And again, about an inch or so down. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a piece of number 36 bank line. Again, lashings are where this bank line really, really shines. We pull out my SAK and get that uh, carrying it's got a little thing on here for carrying packages carrying bundles of firewood that works really good for pulling lashings tight so I get that ready and then I'm just going to take and I'm going to take a bite in this line just like this and now I want to put that bite where I'm going to wrap to so when I take that bite I'm going to lay that bite on this on top of that split right here just like this and I'm going to start wrapping, like I said, about an inch up above that. So about right here is where I'm going to start wrapping. And I'm just going to come down, and I'm going to wrap that around. And what I'm doing there is I've got the tail sticking out, and I've got the loop here. So what will happen when I get to the end is I can tuck my end into this loop and yank it down tight. A pair of pliers would come in real handy for that. But I'm going to use my tensioning device for that. And again... The tighter you get these lashings, the better off you're going to be. So I'll just wrap it around that thing a couple of times and hold on to it. Get it on there and yank it down real good. Just like that. And that's about half of what I want. That's about five wraps. I'm going to go up about five more. And I'm trying to keep them as neat as possible. There's three. Again, about every three wraps... I like to get that tensioning tool on there and really crank down that thing. Two more wraps will give us about what we want. And now we're just going to take that tag end 
when we come around that last wrap and we're going to put it inside of that loop right here. So we'll take it and we'll bring it up right there. And that's where it comes around is right to that loop. And we'll just hold on to it like this with our finger. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the tag end out here and I'm going to wrap my tensioner around it a couple of times where I can get a good grip on it. And I'm going to yank that loop straight up through there, just like that. Until I've got that pulled all the way up in there to where it's just about to yank that loop through. That gives me a good, what's called a nail knot, and there's no way that's coming out of there. Now I can take my knife and I can just trim this off just like this and this. So I don't have any sloppy ends hanging out. And there's no way that's going to come undone. And I'll do the same thing on the other end. Okay, so let's talk about stringing up our bow saw, putting it together. Now, first of all, I've just slid this down inside of one of the slits right here. And just kind of butted it up against the key ring. And backed it in there enough to where it's got some room to wiggle. And it's not going to be right against this lashing. Because you're going to pull it sideways a little bit when you string this thing up. Now, the other key ring gives you the advantage of something to pull on and keep that blade away from you. So you're going to put this thing on top of your foot, very similar to the way you would string a bow. And step through it, and then push down like this, pulling up on the blade at the same time. And once you get that thing bent down, find your notch and slide it in, just like that, and let it bite. And you now have your bow saw strung. Now, if I were going to, obviously I'd leave this like this for a while because now this is going to take a set. This is a green piece of wood, so it's going to take a set. And I won't have to keep bending it over and over again and take a chance on breaking it. If I just string it up the one time and leave it for a while, it'll take a pretty good set. All these fibers will break out and they'll get set without splitting this thing or breaking it. Now, also, it's got a little bit more of an angle here than it does here which lends itself to being a good handle on this side for sawing. I have this much depth. I have a good 8 to 10 inches here as far as a, the depth of the log I can cut or the size of log I can cut without having to roll that log over. With a buck saw, I'd have another bar coming across here or a piece of string or something that would prevent me from going up into here as far as cutting a, a bigger around piece of material. I don't have that with a bow saw. That's the big advantage of a bow saw over a buck saw in my opinion. If I was going to keep this around camp and use it quite a bit, I probably would go ahead and make another nail knot lashing, maybe about this long right here, and I may go ahead and do that just to give myself a good grippy handle because this tarred bank line, again, like I said, that's where it really shines. It's going to give you a really good grip that's going to be non-slip on that saw. So before we do that, let's put this thing to some wood and test it out. Okay, I've got a piece of sycamore here. That's some pretty good hard wood. Let's just cut us a piece of it off and see how the saw does. You know with these saws you don't want to try to push down on them so much because you want the blade to do the work. too bad. That only took a couple of minutes. Nice heavy piece of sycamore there. Cut right through it like nobody's business. That's a good four inch log, no problem. So I'd say overall she did a pretty good job. Okay guys, well I'm Dave Canberra from the Pathfinder School and I appreciate you joining me for this video on this quick how-to on making a 
bushcraft bow saw. A very simple way to do things. I think these lashings right above your splits are critical. Not so much on the grip, but if you're going to keep this thing long term or use it for a weekend camp or whatever, it's going to be a lot more comfortable for you that way. These rings just give you a way to hang that thing up out of the way and safe. I appreciate you joining me for this video. I thank you for everything you do for me, for my school, for my family, for my friends, my sponsors, and affiliates. And I'll be back with another video as soon as I can. Thanks, guys.